morning, good afternoon, and good evening, guys. Celtagorband here, and today I am bringing you a subscribers battle replay submitted by Gearhawk. This is the Siege or Battle of Nancy. Uh, so it uh, happened in the late period. It was between the Burgundians, the Duchy of Burgundy, and the Duchy of Lorraine. And it also had some Swiss mercenaries in it as well, as you can see by these copper shields moving forwards. Um, so uh, I think you guys got a little bit of the backstory uh, in the intro, but I'll just kind of go ahead and recap it just again. Uh, so basically, this, this final battle was the end to a very, very long, grueling series of wars called the Burgundian Wars. And it was all... It was all run by uh, Duke Charles the Bold, uh, the Duke of Burgundy. And he was sieging Nancy for about, I think it was about four or five months, and all through the winter. And usually siege armies in the winter time, they would kind of break the siege and uh, renew it in the springtime just because of the attrition you would you would get from, you know, the cold weather on your men. They would all be tired and exhausted. Not a lot of food. But uh, Duke Charles the Bold knew that uh, Rene II, who is actually, I think he is right here. Yes, he is. So Rene II, the Duke of Lorraine, had actually captured Nancy uh, the previous year. Uh, and Duke Charles the Bold knew that uh, Rene II would move forwards to... Uh, save the capital because Nancy is the capital of the Duchy of Lorraine. So Charles decides that he's going to continue on with the siege and uh, hope that the attackers give in before the reinforcements arrive. Well, as you guys can see, that did not happen. Rene II, uh, he managed to gather a large horse uh, host of uh, Lorrainers or uh, men from the Duchy of Lorraine. I don't know if Lorrainers is the... Uh, correct term uh, but he also brought a very large mercenary army of Swiss as well and Duke Charles the Bold kind of realized his error but it was unfortunately too late at this point and he just ordered his men to kind of uh, form up outside the city and be ready to you know block the uh, Duchy of Lorraine and their Swiss mercenaries from reinforcing the city itself and then meanwhile on the other side we have uh, Duke Charles uh, the Bold himself with this army and he is going to be sieging the city. So it's a very very interesting setup. I uh, definitely haven't had anything this diverse on my channel. Uh, so I'll just kind of outline a couple of rules real quick. So this was a tier 3 uh, unit roster only. So you could only bring tier 3 units and it was unlimited funds but no chevrons allowed. So you could basically bring the, the best that you could and uh, just that was it. You can't like add on any experience points after that. Uh, and then we got kind of a string of rules here. So for the art attacking armies, you could bring two arty and then uh, one arty for the defender of the city. Uh, no artillery for these, this reinforcement army though. And they were only allowed to have a maximum of three cav per player, I believe, or maybe total. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's per player. And uh, for the attackers, Duke Charles the Bold's Burgundian force, it was maximum two attackers per player and uh, max five missile units. And the bombardment uh, is obviously underway right now. So uh, Duke Charles the Bold is going to be uh, firing into the midst of the city, kind of opening up breach points and taking out the towers. But uh, basically what's going to go down is these two armies from Burgundy, they have to hold and eliminate this reinforcement army. So the, the city assault will not begin until this land battle is over. So you guys are kind of getting a two for one in this uh, battle. It's going to be very long, but we've got this really nice epic 2v2 two, two two land battle that's going to start. And then at the end there will be a kind of a one versus one uh, for the siege with whatever is left over from the land battle. So uh, it kind of looks like they're moving forwards. I'm going to see if I can squeeze out the army comps here before the battle begins. So beginning with the Swiss, which is played by uh, Harry Hobbit. So he's got some uh, heavy polearm infantry here. He's got a lot of copper shields in the front lines. That's their most elite infantry. 
Then we got some Swiss nobles of the late period mixed in with some crossbows. And then we have Rudolph of El Arlek for the general. More uh, dismounted uh, pole arms behind. He's got some pikes as well, heavy pikemen. And he's bringing more Swiss nobles over here with some uh, more heavy halberdiers. And then this is the Duchy of Lorraine. Now, there are two Duchy of Lorraine armies, but I would assume that this is uh, Slytacular. So, uh, this, all of these units, by the way, I forgot to mention, but from the Duchy of Lorraine, they were all recently remodeled by uh, one of the players here, Azrian Fox. I believe he's the Lorrainer army that is holding inside the city. So, he has completely redone all of these units, and I have to say, they look amazing. Just take a look at the details on these shields. Like, this reminds me of, like, a snippet from the Hundred Years' War, like, in your history books or whatever. Just excellent, excellent modeling. I'm going to really try and focus uh, very carefully on these units here, but I will 100% slaughter the names, so I do apologize for that. Uh, so he's got some Pavis Langsteck men, I believe is how you would say it. So decent uh, Pavis spear unit. And then in behind, he's got some Holmes Tanned. So I believe that's like, like a two-handed... Uh, something for like a two-handed men basically translates to. These guys look epic. And then check out these guys in behind too. Some Sewell Demand. Just look at these guys. They look amazing. Very, very nice. I'm loving the little, uh, little feathers as well. Really, really authentic looking. And then he's got some Sword Millis as well of the late period. And what else we got here? Uh, he's got some mercenary Genoese crossbowmen. But I believe that these are not Lorrainer units. They're just uh, Latin units. Because the Duchy of Lorraine, all of these models are built on the Latin Empire. So if you guys are confused by the little sigil, uh, it's, it's just the mod that he's chosen to model them over. Uh, and he's got uh, these guys here too look really epic. It's the dismounted nobles... Darsek? Darseke? I don't know, but they, they just look insane. Really, really nice. And what do we got over here? Oh, he's got uh, some other units over here, some other spears. Yeah, dismounted Courtier of Alsec Lorraine. So they're looking really nice as well. I'm really liking the diversity on the shields in... in uh, in 1212 in general, but in this mod as well, I think that Azrian Fox has really kind of uh, exploited that diversity. Very, very nice there. And then I think there's some cab over here on this flank as well. So here's the uh, Chevalier. Nice uh, late period unit. And I I'm loving how this armor isn't as shiny. It's kind of more tarnished. So these knights have definitely seen battle. Looks really, really good. I'm loving the shields on some of these guys, too. Look at that shield there. Just really, really good attention to detail. So we'll just take a look at the last uh, Lorraine army over here. So I believe that this is Az Azrian Fox's army. So uh, here's some more of the uh, Pavis Langsteckmen. Like, look, look on this shield, too. Like, it's got, like, some kind of ancient, almost, like, Egyptian or Roman, uh, like canvas wraps like showing war back in the old days like chariot and stuff like just just really cool i'm really impressed way to go azrian this is this is good this is why uh total war is as good as it is is because of people like you so uh yeah he's got the house guard of anjou over here looks like he's got some uh lorrainer arc arcub how do you say that arkebuzen arkebuzen but they're basically a uh, gunner unit and I believe I had a snippet of them in the opening video, so they look really cool. Loving the the muskets. And then we got some uh, dismounted uh, Alsetier Lorraine Chevalier. He's got a mortar over here. He's got more of the Chevalier. More crossbows over here. Uh, he's got some of these Moselle Merchant Marines. They They look pretty cool as well. And check out this guy right here. He has an eye patch. I don't know if uh, this is something that Azrian Fox has added in, but I certainly never noticed it before. 
And that's really cool, especially because they're Marines, so you kind of think, like, more piratey, you know. They're probably just drafted into the army for battle. Just to bolster the lines and that kind of stuff. So we're coming in pretty close to the engagement over here. I'm going to kind of rush over the uh, Burgundy forces just because I don't think anything has been changed with them. Uh, so they're still the original. So he's got some home darms of the late period. He's got some gendarme of the late period. Uh, looks like uh, some halberdiers over here. Some pavisier or paviziers. He's got some dismounted uh, gendarme here. Very, very elite infantry. Uh, his main meat ar uh sorry, the main meat of his army is uh, dismounted Holmes Arms of the late period. Then he's got some uh, Savoyard crossbowmen. So they're looking pretty good. And then the General's bodyguard over here, I believe it's just two Dukes of uh, Burgundy. But uh, you could just pretend that uh, there may be lesser, lesser Dukes or lesser nobles. And we got some more... Uh, Dismounted gendarme. I'm just gonna take a screenshot there because that looks pretty epic with this like multi tier defense. More Pavidier in behind. And he's got some free company longbowmen, so some cheaper archers. Then they've also got some Colev. Um, I always want to say Colverine, but it's Colevniere. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sure all you guys are laughing, but uh, at least I'm making the attempt, right? And, uh,. It works that sometimes it annoys you guys so much that you actually speak up and tell me the right way to pronounce it. So, yeah, we got some more gendarmes of the late period over here. And uh, some pavisier. And uh, those two armies, uh, there's three players of Burgundy. Uh, so it would be Gearhawk, uh, Grimgor, Eisenfaust, and Luke, George, of Bologna. So this is the last uh, Burgundian army over here charged with taking the city. So again, pretty much the same dismounted home arms. Uh, here is Charles the Bold. Let's go ahead and see if we can grab a pic of him. I think that would be him there with the golden helmet. He sounds like such a proud person. <laughs> so very, very nice there. And uh, he's pretty much just brought the same. He's got a lot of the... Uh, uh, Savoyard crossbows. He's got more of the dismounted gendarme, uh, dismounted home dar home's arm, and some pavisier. He's got some pikes over here, Flemish pikemen, and I believe that that's it. So good, we covered all of that just uh, before the engagement. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this to play, as it is going to be a very long battle. So it looks like the Swiss are pulling back just a little bit. They kind of want to wait for the Duchy of Lorraine to move forwards with their troops. And uh, I really, really like this kind of defense here. The Burgundians have kind of formed up their men in this nice tight shield wall. Or shield screen, I could say. Very, very nice looking. So, let's see what they're planning to do over here. They should be moving forwards any minute now. Yes, here comes the Dutch of Lorraine. Uh, he's going to be moving forwards his uh, crossbows to probably get into range. He has to watch his uh, halberdiers as well, moving them forwards first, because the Burgundians have a lot of crossbows. And once they get into range, they are going to be shredded. Uh, now, they do have... It looks like they uh, do have good armor. So the missile block chance uh, being 40, that's, I guess, decent. What are the regulars? 65 for missile block chance on the copper shields. Yeah, so they're going to have to be careful with their uh, elite halberds over here. Go ahead and minimize that now. And, uh, yeah, you guys aren't missing anything right now. Uh, the bombardment phase is going on. But, uh, again, they can't engage in the city until this land battle has come to a conclusion. So we'll, we'll see. And I did watch this battle all the way through. Uh, and I believe that it starts right here with uh, some of the uh, home arms of the late period. And some of the Chevalier of the Duchy of Lorraine. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in over here so you can see the cab is moving forwards very, very quickly. There we go. They've 
moved into their charging status, and it looks like the Duchy of Burgundy is going to charge in just in time. Very nice there. And it looks like it's activated the rest of the cab to move forwards as well. And there they go. They're going to charge in. Excellent, excellent. So off to an explosive start so far. And the Duchy of Burgundy, uh, he is moving quickly moving forward some halberdiers in the late period. But the Duchy of Lorraine notices that, and he's going to charge right into the sides of these units. Uh, he does turn them just in time, but ooh, that is a tough charge. So now that the Cav is engaged in melee, the pole arms will be able to turn it around. But they lost over 20 men in that charge. And the Duchy of uh, Burgundy is quickly sending more dismounted gendarmes into the rear of the Cav to try to lock them into melee here. He's also pouring in a lot of spears too. He really, really wants to win this, this side of the battle. Uh, on the other side, looks like the Swiss Cav is a little bit more tentative about going in. So they're kind of just, you know, testing the waters, see, seeing if the uh, Cav from the Duchy of Burgundy over here is uh, willing to move in. Looks like uh, he's going to play it smart and move back closer to his spears. But yeah, look, the crossbows uh, have started to fire on these copper shields as well. They do have a good missile block chance. So not too many of them will be dying, but I worry about those halberdiers when they get into melee. Or sorry, when they get into range. Oh, yep, there's, there's a couple that are killed, but that's all right. I'm going to keep flipping on between the cinematics and the uh, the game HUD just so you guys can see what's going on because this battle uh, is very, very large. It is a 3v3, so I'm going to try and cover as much as possible uh, everything that's going on. So, yeah, you can see that the Chevalier have actually broken just because of all the uh, spears and halberds that have moved in on this flank. Uh, looks like they are going to regain composure, though, and move forwards. And here comes the Swiss. They are going to be pushing forwards into the lines of Burgundy. There we go, charging forwards in a nice wave-like formation. The Burgundian home arms, they're in shield walls, so they're going to hold for quite a while. And uh, I don't want to miss the rest of this charge in, but it looks like this cab is just about to move forwards. The Swiss have actually got some of their halberdiers to back them up as well. Loving this heavy plate armor on this cab. It would just be like a tank running into you. There they go. Charging forwards. It's going to be laggy, guys. It is a big battle. But yeah, it looks like the uh, Duchy of Burgundy didn't really notice that this was going on and uh, the Swiss got a really good charge off on them. Uh, it doesn't look like they really lost too many in that engagement though, but here come the heavy halberdiers from the Swiss to back them up. And the battle has officially begun. Yeah, you can see that uh, pretty much the copper shields have engaged in melee. Uh, almost all the way around the, the entire battle line. Looks like one of the Duke of Burgundy's, uh, the general bodyguard, is moving out. I think he wants to go after some of these unprotected crossbows. The Duchy of Lorraine notices this, and he's going to try to send in some halberdiers very quickly to support. But, yeah, it looks like he's going to catch some of the crossbows and then pull out right away. But over on this flank where the battle begun, it, the Duchy of Burgundy has done excellent. Uh, he's really been able to nerf the charge of the Chevalier of the late period on this flank. Uh, just with the help of his spears and halberds. But it does leave uh, this flank open a little bit on over here. So he's going to have to be really careful. Uh, the Duke of Burgundy getting a nice charge on the backs of these uh, guild halberd as well. 
I believe uh, I forgot to show you this unit, but uh, they are in the heat of battle right now. And it looks like they're trying to uh, pull out there, but another home, home's the hand is uh, moving forwards. What do we got? Uh, he's down to 29 right now. He's going to have to be careful moving these crossbows out, though. And yeah, just look at this. The Swiss infantry is starting to break over here. Let's go ahead and turn this to a uh, slow motion. So yeah, the copper shield's really not uh, performing well against the uh, dismounted Holmes arms. But we do have some heavy halberdiers in for the Swiss in behind with their uh, beautiful uh, gold and black armor. They're looking really nice. Yeah, it just looks like the copper shields are not as heavily armored as the uh, home arms. So yeah, it's not looking too good over there. Over on this flank, if we kind of turn on the HUD. Uh, I don't know. It looks like the Swiss nobles of the late period also having a really tough time, even with their uh, ha heavy halberdiers in the mix. Uh, the gendarmes of the late period are doing really well holding them back. If I was uh, this player, I would maybe move forward this spear unit uh, to help them out, but it really doesn't look like they need it, so... Uh, looks like we got a little bit of an opening here. The uh, home arms of the late period are breaking. And here come more Swiss nobles pouring forwards through the gap. What do we got over here? Yeah, it looks like we're um, one of the players is moving forward some uh, Pavaziers to kind of nerf this charge or maybe plug the gap. I don't know where the Swiss nobles are going. Oh, they're actually going to charge into the back of this unit here. Oh, good battle awareness there. I didn't even notice you could get around here. So yeah, good charge by the Swiss nobles. But unfortunately, they're going to kind of be locked in this uh, little killing zone now if the player moves forwards his other unit of spears. So looking at the manpower, uh, I believe it was pretty even. Yeah, as, uh, the Duchy of Burgundy had 7,400 men, and the Duchy of Lorraine and her mercenaries had 7,800 men. So we're down to pretty much uh, 6,700 each, so it's really neck and neck already in this battle with 40 minutes still to go. How, how much damage they do on them. Not too bad. Yeah, about 50, 50 kills there. So I'm sure that the Duchy of uh, Burgundy is sweating a little bit now that they've kind of opened up this massive hole in their formation. But uh, they're retreating some depleted units of swords and spears to kind of block them off. And over on this flank, we've actually got some more uh, fighting over here. It looks like a Duke Rene II, Savior of Nancy, is engaged in melee with some of the gendarmes of the late period. We've got some, uh, what do we got here? Some dismounted gendarme and some paviziers fighting against the... What is this, a spear unit? Yeah, it's a heavy spear unit with some swords. So the battle lines have kind of broken. Everybody's just fighting every which way. But yeah, the Swiss are having a tough time. And over here, I think the Duchy of Lorraine is doing a little bit better. I think their units are a little more heavily armored. We can go ahead and turn on uh, play. You can hear those battle sounds going on. We'll just kind of run down the battle line. So here's another unit with halberds. Uh, I think that they uh, will do decently well against these uh, sorted units. Just with their, I think that their heavy attacks uh, will just break down these wooden shields eventually. And here's the Swiss over here, but you can really see how thin their lines are getting. They've taken a lot of casualties in this fight so far. But I guess they are mercenaries again, so... The more of them die, the less you have to pay them. 
or the less of them you have to pay. Uh, over on this flank, it looks like the Swiss are doing much better. What is this unit here? Yeah, they're heavy halberdiers. They're uh, doing really well against the home arms. And we've got some more uh, pikes moving in as well, some heavy pikemen. I would actually probably move them uh, down to this side where the copper shields are starting to break. But the Duchy of Lorraine is slowly moving forwards his uh, spears as well. He's got a lot of infantry still in reserve. And the Duchy of Burgundy, his forces are also starting to waver. They're getting quite depleted at this point. But he has managed to close that gap with a, a spear unit and a sword unit. Let's try and uh, get a good shot in here. The bodies are already starting to pile up. I could just imagine, you know, like just slipping and sliding over top of wet armor and stuff, trying to gain your footing. Probably not as glamorous as uh, we think it would be. There go the uh, Pavi Spears moving forwards with their glorious shields. Sounds like we got some more uh, infantry moving in. Is this the Swiss? Yeah, actually, they've got some heavy pikemen moving forwards, but they're just being shot at point blank. And uh, now they're, they've kind of charged in with some of their heavy halberdiers. The pikes are really out of position, as you can tell. This is not looking good. They really stand to be outflanked here, or at least attacked on three sides. zoom out and see what's going on with this unit. Yeah. Oh, they've just set themselves up to be uh, shot at in the flank while being attacked uh, by the gendarmes in, in the other flank. Oh, that's, that's tough to see, but oh, what's going on here? Looks like we've got uh, Rudolph of Elric, I believe it is. Arlac? Yeah, it is. Look, he's just running through, just destroying all of these uh, crossbows. He's going to have to be careful moving into these uh, gendarmes, though. Oh, he's actually smartly uh, moving right into the backs of the uh, Burgundy lines. That's got to send a shockwave of fear down the ranks. But he's actually probably going to get slaughtered here. Yeah, down to 22 men. Let's kind of zoom out and take a look at the battle overall. So, some pockets of fighting over here on this flank. Uh, Duke Rene is still fighting it out, and one of the Dukes of Burgundy, uh, one of the generals, is uh, fighting here. I believe that that is the Swiss general, so that would be Harry Hobbit's general, slain on the battlefield. So I admire, I admire the aggressive play, but it might have been better to save his general back, because now a lot of his uh, forces are just going to break. Uh, they're wavering, casualties sustained. I'm sure once they hear about the death of the general, it'll be all over. Let's take a look at these uh, spear units, though, fighting in melee. I feel like it'd be near impossible to kill one of these guys unless you could physically get your hand on their shield and like rip it down. Oh yes, more infantry uh, being kind of committed over here onto this flank now. So there's almost like this little uh, forested battle going on over here. Got a lot of the... Uh, heavy infantry here with their pole arms, but they're kind of being surrounded by these uh, Pavaziers from the Burgundians. We've got more infantry from 
Burgundy over on this side as well. How are we looking? Yeah, finally the Duke Rene has broken this cab unit. He's been fighting it for probably about 10 minutes now. Uh, I guess he had to bring in some, some spears to help out. And I think they're going to capitalize on the Duke of Burgundy over here being caught in melee. Again, eh? Oh, no, no. That, that, would be, uh, that would be this one. So I believe because these are the allies technically. So, yeah, it looks like he's been uh, slaughtered on the battlefield by Rene, savior of Nancy. But uh, I think that uh, the Burgundians are doing really well over on this flank here. Sending some archers in against the Pavaziers. I don't know how effective that's going to be, but I think at this point he's just trying to slow down any infantry he can. I apologize for such general names like he and this player, but because they're all playing the same one, I don't actually know which uh, which army comp they have. Did they break those spears? No, did they? Oh yes, they did. Bravo. And it looks like they're going right into the next unit of crossbows over here. Oh, but here comes uh, Duke Rene the second with a disgusting charge on these poor home arms. I wonder if he's going to break them. Yeah, they're wavering, so. And, yep, I think he's broken them. Very good play there. I try to turn around and quickly get into these uh, halberdiers. Oh, well. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's going to turn around to go after them, so... Yeah, so look how well the Duke of Burgundy players, the two players out here, did against the Swiss. Uh, I think that their copper shields really just didn't have the, uh... I don't know, the melee attack and melee damage to break through that spear wall. Here comes Duke Rene again. Into the sides of these crossbows. Let's try and uh, get some cab versus infantry uh, fighting here. I rarely do that, just because it's usually slower. Oh no, here comes some of the gendarmes in behind the general and his men. And I believe that's actually, uh, oops. That's actually Duke Rene right there with the top hat. Oh no, he was slain! Oh, that is not good. Yes, Duke Rene II, savior of Nancy, has been slain on the battlefield. Now, that's not historically accurate, so for those of you guys that were rooting for uh, Rene, uh, he actually did survive this battle. But unfortunately, in Total War, anything can happen. And these poor uh, sword millis over here as well are kind of being sandwiched between uh, the Burgundian troops as well. I'm kind of surprised with these units too because uh, sword Millis, I believe. Uh, I thought it translated to Sword Militia. Uh, so I'm kind of shocked that they're a Tier 3 unit, but I could be wrong. They just seem to be, like, not as heavily armored. It's almost like padded armor. Oh, and there we go. Looks like they broke it as well. But looks like they've still got some halberdiers fighting. So let's uh, kind of zoom out again, see what we have left. So what do we got? So crossbows for the Swiss. Yeah, it looks like they got four units of crossbows. And then the Lorraine.
rain army over here has two units of halberds and a spear unit. Looking at Burgundy, they've got uh, some home arms, some dismounted gendarmes. They've got some of their uh, gunners out here. And they've also got some crossbows. So this is pretty close. Pretty close battle. It's uh, kind of all going to come down to these crossbows here. Because there's no cav for the Burgundians to be able to chase them down. Yeah, just look at that. They're just being destroyed by archer fire right now. Looks like they're actually going to try to go into melee. Just ignore the archers altogether. Wait, what are they doing? What are they doing here? Oh, yeah, they're just getting mowed down. Oh, they're dropping like flies. Oh, that's a tough sight to see. They must be broken. They have to be. Yeah, yeah, they are. Okay. And, uh, yeah, I can see this bar dropping as well. So it looks like they're focusing right on the backs of these uh, gendarmes over here. I'm going to try and zoom in so we can see the arrow fire coming forwards. Yeah, there we go. You can see a couple of them starting to fall. Which is hard... Uh, that's hard, too, because this is a very expensive and very helpful unit in battle. So the last thing you want uh, to do is just waste them by having your backs to archers. But at this point, there's really no other choice. Ooh. Oh. Oh. Another five or seven guys falling there. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Burgundians. I'm sorry. Look at that, they're just gone. Wow, I think we've seen enough. We've seen enough over there. Yeah, so they've broken as well. So they're gone and they're just moving on to the spears now. The Burgundians clumping up a lot of their good infantry over here against this one unit. And over here, just look at this, look. All their crossbows are broken. To the Swiss crossbows. So the Swiss player coming back. Holding fast with his crossbows. Excellent job to the Harry Hobbit. He's really turning this battle around. Yeah, and I just don't think these crossbows are doing as much damage. And these gunners, too. He, uh, the Burgundians have got their gunners focused on the uh, dismounted nobles, but... If you hover over them, you can see that they're obstructed, so they will not shoot if there are friendlies in the way. So he should try to get them around uh, to a better position. Let's just try to come to the... Uh... I went the long way around with my camera. I don't exactly know why I did that. But uh, just to the sight of these brave nobles... action going on over here oh nice very good oh but he gets he gets killed right after he has his victory sorry for the lag guys again it's it's a big battle and is that the spears breaking as well yes it is there goes another spear unit oh it looks like they rallied but uh, I don't think they're going to be able to do much damage. 45 brave men fighting on in this unit. It looks like they're just starting to waver now. <laughs> the Burgundians over here, they've uh, sent their archers into melee, but they've just broken immediately. Oh, yeah, let's watch this uh, poor spear unit. Come on, turn off the HUD. There we go. They do have their shields up, so that's going to help them quite a bit against the archer fire. Oh, I say that, but... Ooh. Let's go ahead and turn this to slow motion so we can actually see some nice shots here instead of just lagging. So here come the rest of the Burgundian infantry, just probably 
just over 100. I'd want to say like 30 or uh, 130, 140 men left on this battlefield. And the crossbows are just going to pull away. There's no need for them to engage when they still have ammo left. These other two crossbows, uh, yeah, they're firing at the flanks of the men. The gunners, though, are actually uh, doing some good work. It looks like uh, they're trying to fire at this uh, this unit of archers over here. But we've got another two units of Swiss crossbows uh, focusing these gunners. This is a good target. You want to try to eliminate this uh, these gunners as quickly as possible. But just look at the death. So many men just slain on this battlefield right now. And uh, since we have a little bit of a lull, it looks like uh, the crossbows are just kind of uh, evening the playing field, so we'll keep the HUD on right now. But I just like to keep you guys up to date on what historically happened. Uh, so actually, Charles the Bold was over here on this flank uh, with his entire force, I believe, uh, were most of it. I think there was only two or three hundred on the other side of the city. And uh, it was an overwhelming victory for the Lorraine Swiss Alliance, and Charles the Bold is actually slain on the battlefield at this point. Uh, so, like, a, for Total War, it's a little hard to kind of get that exactly right. Like I said, uh, Rene II uh, lived to tell the tale of this battle, and Charles the Bold was slain. But uh, where it stands right now in this in this battle, uh, Rene is dead. Two of the Burgundian dukes are dead. The Swiss general is dead. So the only ones left are Charles the Bold, who is over here on this flank. And then we have the uh, Count of Anjou in the city center. So two armies with two generals left. And we can go ahead and just hit play. So, yeah, surprising turn of events, but it looks like Harry Hobbit and his crossbows are going to secure victory against the Burgundians here. And for a while there, like four or five minutes ago, there was like eight or ten units left for the Burgundians. But when you lose your general and then get fired upon by crossbows, uh, that's enough to shatter the most resilient of men. Yeah, they're just being mowed down as well. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for this battle. So, uh, looks like we're here kind of just in time to see the uh, main assault begin. So, we've got uh, Charles the Bold. Let's go ahead and zoom in on him. So, he's, uh, he's setting up outside the city here. He is ready to attack. He's probably received word that his uh, army on the other side has been eliminated. So, he wants to get into the city quickly. Unwashed bastards, they're fighting back. Oh, looks like we got some uh, cav here from the uh, Lorraine player. Kind of, kind of just making sure that these uh, just stalling, I would say, until the crossbows from the Swiss can move forwards. But uh, the Flemish pikes were ordered to move into the gap in case they charge down at the men. Looks like he's also got his uh, pavaziers in square formation. So let's see what we got for defenses right now. So he's got a unit of spears over here, a unit of swords. He's got a couple unit of crossbows. Uh, the artillery crew is moving forwards in the city, but it looks like he's going to move quickly and eliminate that. We've got some siege tower with some halberdiers coming over here, though, so he's going to have to be careful. He's got a decent amount of crossbows, and he does have some swords as well to hold the final stand. And, and yes, looks like we're going to start right over here with a charge from some of the cav into the merchant militia, or the merchant marines, I'm sorry. Oh, you guys going to stop? There we go. Oh, that's going to kind of nerf their charge a little bit. Oh, actually, uh, the the units in behind got a decent charge, knocking over quite a few of these swords. Looks like they're going to be able to get back up, though. And they're just going to run away. So that was a good charge. 
slaying actually uh, close to half the unit there. Yes, and you can see that the Swiss were victorious with their crossbows. Most of them are out of ammo. But they're going to be marching into the city, or running, I should say. Word is probably reached, and the Charles the Bold is moving his men to take the walls. So the Swiss have been ordered to run at haste to support. So they're going to be going over the bridge and into the city from this side. That is actually a pretty nice shot, too. You can see the defenders. The, the flags of Lorraine are still flying high, so I'm sure that's uh, uh, some consolation to these Swiss that uh, maybe they will see some coin at the end of this battle after all. So, what do we got for... Uh, let's uh, make sure we see the second charge here real quick. Wow, yeah, that's going to be the end of that unit there. Uh, you shouldn't have kept that unit out in the open. Uh, we do have some art, or some crossbows coming in, but... Wow, looks like that unit is going to hang on, though. They are pretty shaken. But I just wanted to take a look at the man count. So it's 2,550 to 2,590. So this... this battle this whole hour-long battle has been neck and neck so far just crazy sounds sounds like we got some artillery fire coming in as well they're holding up by this little chapel here I still don't think that any of the uh, infantry has moved forwards yet but here comes some explosive rounds oh that's gonna set a fire yes it looks like it has Men are starting to cough. I guess they're breathing in the fumes of the smoke. Oh, nice hits there. Just breaking the entire formation. Oh, that's tough to see if you're rooting for Lorraine at this point. Uh, they need to hold on to every available man. Look at the arrow fire coming over overhead as well, and then uh, being returned. Ugh. Oh my goodness! More, more shots coming in. Some of the men are just burning alive. That sound even makes me scared. Ugh. So, yeah, looks like the Burgundy, the last Burgundian player, he's being very calm and cautious about this. Uh, he's really trying to use his ammo wisely and just kind of expend it all before he just charges into battle. Looks like the gendarmes have engaged the spears. Uh, it wasn't a very good charge, though, but I think it did kind of pull them out of formation, which is good. But the spears are just reforming at this point. A lot of the arrows just bouncing off the shields. And here come the gendarmes. Nice charge. So the battle for the city has begun. The battle of the Siege of Nancy. Historically speaking, there actually wasn't a Siege of Nancy because the entire Burgundian force was slain right outside the walls. But uh, this is a pretty cinematic uh, recreation of the battle. Uh, he's got to watch that crossbow fire. He's getting a lot of friendly fire on his gendarmes. kind of zoom out and just make sure nothing else is going on in the battle here. Looks like he does have some spears, but he's lost this gate over here. And does he have his halberdiers moving up? 
Uh, it's possible some of these siege towers actually glitched out before they could open on the walls. So that's probably why he is not uh, moving any of them forwards. See over here, they're kind of stuck as well. Yeah, and they're actually uh, pulling down off the siege towers. So uh, probably something happened with the towers, but that's all right. I think he has enough uh, openings uh, to just be able to move all his forces inside the city here. And here they come. So the looks oh it looks like the uh, halberdiers yes they actually did break through and they're going after all of the crossbows. Uh, it looks like the duchy of Lorraine is quickly trying to pull all of his uh, crossbows out of melee, or maybe he's sending them in. Yeah, it doesn't look maybe it's some pathfinding issues. Yeah, I think it is. He's trying to get them out of there. But these, uh, these Swiss crossbows, they are so exhausted from the battle on the other side. Uh, they're just going to get slaughtered. Oh, but that friendly fire, he's got to be careful with that. Well, actually, it looks like it's a combination of both. Some Lorraine crossbows, yeah, firing in the front as well. So, yeah, good play, good play. Oh, poor guy. So, I think that that is pretty much uh, the last of the Swiss. But this uh, John Darm unit is uh, wavering. And it looks like they're going to be able to catch all of the crossbows again. Yeah, he's trying to pull them out. And they're just going to continue pushing up the ramp. Into another unit of Pavaziers. This guy, oh, this guy was caught behind enemy lines. That sucks. He lost his head. Very nice. So, yeah, they're already starting to uh, push into the town center. Uh, over on this flank, some of the spears have been quite depleted. And it looks like they're going to be pulling back from this gatehouse, which is a smart idea. He's really been outflanked. He's got some Pavaziers over here, possibly some Halberdiers coming in. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really even bother holding uh, these choke points anymore. I would pull back to the town center. 2,300 for the Burgundians, 2,000 for the Duchy of Lorraine. So the attackers uh, starting to get a little bit of a lead in the man count. Yeah, he's trying to evacuate some of his merchant marines from these uh, crossbows. They're being set up in a nice position to kind of fire over top of these buildings. And just 12 minutes left in this battle. So if you guys are still with me, thanks very much for watching. I, I think this will probably be the longest battle that I put onto my channel, but it is so worth it. I'm, I'm, I love my epic battle series. I love these historical battles, and it was so nice for a change for uh, someone else to kind of set it up and, and play it. What are these Burgundians doing here? Must have been a misclick or something, but they are engaged in melee now. Right in the corner. I don't know what they're doing. I think he was trying to hide them uh, from some artillery fire. But we've got some cav running amok over here as well. And we've got some more uh, 
gendarmes on this flank. They're gonna be moving forwards to take on these merchant marines. Oh yeah, they're under heavy crossbow fire though. Have to be careful though there's a little bit of an opening in between the uh in between the houses here he may be able to sneak his unit in behind uh likewise as well actually the uh duchy of lorraine might be able to get some good flanking fire on this unit how are we looking on the other side? Uh, yeah, it looks like uh, the Duchy of Burgundy, or Burgundy, I should say. I don't know why I say Burgundy. I believe it's Burgundy. But he's uh, sending his Flemish pikes into battle. And the uh, Pavaziers are more than happy to kind of engage as well. be trying to focus them with my archers as well. Yeah, good call, good call. Because these pikes over time, these Flemish pikes are sturdy. They they will definitely be able to wipe out these spears if they're not supported. Oh, but here comes some more infantry from the Duchy of Burgundy. Yeah, he actually might be able to outflank these spears here. Yeah, good call, good call. He can get right around and look at this over here. There's a unit of uh, Chevalier that is already engaged in melee against some of the Burgundian forces. And now they have a stand to be outflanked. But it looks like they're just going to completely ignore them. Interesting, interesting. underway and it looks like the Burgundian forces have pushed right into the town center so they've really opened this uh, area up and they've broken the spears as well the Flemish pikes just managing to hang on Charles the Bold is really trying to capitalize on this opening he's he's actually coming up himself into the town center and looks like we're running low on infantry over here I'd be pulling the house guard of Anjou back these spears need to come back. These guns need to come back. This sword unit needs to come back. Uh, there's there's too many defenders outside the city walls here. Or the inner walls, I should say. And this cav unit is not going to hold for long. Yeah, look at Charles the Bold. Oh, I'm sorry I missed that, guys. But an excellent charge by the uh, Duke of Burgundy just destroys this unit of Chevalier. And he's now opened another pathway into the city. Oh, I'm so sorry I missed that. So yeah, he's going to pull back from the battle because the crossbows are actually focusing pretty hard in on him. And the cab is broken as well. Looks like we got some gunners and some crossbows over here. But he needs some infantry to kind of throw into the front lines. Wow, these guns are just mowing down this infantry, though. Yeah, he does have one thin unit of uh, Chevalier that's going to try to hold all of these Burgundian forces. But it's starting not to look too good for the Duchy of Lorraine. Whoops. Sorry about that. 
he's really, really running out of infantry. I'm hearing some marching, though. What do we got coming up here? Oh, we got some, some spears moving away. And here come the home arms. Ready to engage. And the town center is starting to be captured. Look at all these crossbows still left, too. And Charles the Bull just cleaning up some of the Pavizier, or Paviziers, however you guys like to pronounce it. Oh my goodness, what was that? Was that crossbows again? Yeah, it was. Oh, the Duke's got to be careful here. There he is, too. That's him in his golden helmet. He is still alive. I believe he's uh, one of the two generals still alive in this battle. Come on, Charles. Get some kills. Kill these retreating uh, spears. What are you doing? You're just, like, dancing with them. All right, yeah, he's going to get out of there. Zooming in over to here. Yeah, just look at that. So the uh, dismounted home arms of uh, Burgundy, or Burgundy, they are just completely taking over the city. We got some more of the Chevalier moving forwards, but it's too late. It's almost like the attackers now become the defenders. They've, they've captured this, this uh, town center, and it's up to the Duchy of Lorraine to get it again. But it looks like the Count of Anjou is actually getting some good flanking uh, shots over here. So the uh, Jean de Cheval, or the... Uh, are they... Sh yeah, dismounted... Oh, sorry, the dismounted gendarme. They're still hanging on, surprisingly. And now they're actually locked in by this unit of spears, so... Oh, it is not looking good. Four minutes left in the battle. If we look at the balance of power, it's back into the Burgundians' favor, and they have a 400-man lead. And it is climbing. Count of Anjou, he's still going to get out of there. Let's go ahead and zoom in onto him here, see what he's uh, planning next. Looks like some Burgundians uh, may be getting charged in a minute or two. Oh, they tried to turn around, but I still think that the charge is going to be there. Very nice. And then he's just going to pull out very quickly. Yeah, so that routed that unit there. They are shattered. Oh, but that's 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 got to be frustrating for the Duchy of Lorraine. It looks so promising with them being able to win the uh, battle outside the walls just barely. But now it looks like, you know, they've got a lot of archers still left, but unfortunately they just don't have any good infantry. A lot of the infantry is just being run down as we speak. Where is the Duke? Oh, he's over here. He's actually being fired upon. By crossbows. He's just trying to stay alive until the end of the battle. Meanwhile, the crossbows on the walls are just firing frantically. Looks like uh, we still got some mortar fire going on as well. So a very, very bloody battle. Almost 15,000 men present in this battle. And uh, probably less than a thousand will walk away from it. Ooh. Yeah, we're pretty much down to the last minute of the battle here, guys. Uh, it looks like 
uh, the Duchy of Burgundy is going to be victorious in this battle. He's just kind of finishing off the remaining crossbow units. The mortar is still firing, but it's not going to be enough. You can see that the spears are about to flank one of the uh, last units still fighting for the Duchy of Lorraine. So yeah, if we kind of zoom out and take a look at the entire battlefield, you can really see just the amount of death and, and bodies that are just lying here scattered on the battlefield. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you'd like to see more content in the future. And I will see you in the next one.